Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's a real blessing for us to be together. And tonight we have the grace to have with us a very respectable man. Um, I know for those of you who had the privilege of sitting in his class, you could tell. I hear I've never taken any of his classes, but from his students, I hear that he's a good professor very knowledgeable and uh, we are very happy that he has accepted to take this time to come and speak to us i believe that uh, dr song who is a full uh, professor now is an african by heart if you meet him he's very kind very hospitable as we uh, discussed last monday and for those of you who don't know him he's a professor in the seminary and uh, his wife is with him here. She's the counselor of uh, the institution. So without further ado, I'd like us to, uh, to, uh, to welcome our keynote speaker for this forum, Dr. Song. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. This is really my uh, privilege uh, to be here as a keynote uh, speaker. And I'm really happy that uh, I have been invited by this uh, African society at IAS. Uh, I thought I have a little concerns about the topic because uh, the topic is the Sabbath. If that is the all about the topic, is okay for me, but the small letters under the Sabbath okay, <laughs> is, is a little <laughs> concerns for me in the African uh, experience. Actually, I spent, uh, if my memory is correct, I spent three Sabbaths in Africa, in the continent of Africa. One uh, in the country of Rwanda. The other two I spent in the country of Kenya, I think. But with this uh, spending these uh, only three Sabbaths, I don't think I can say something about the experience of my uh, the, uh, the Experience, uh, African experience of Sabbath, actually. So, I I will not say anything about the small letters. Okay. <laughs> Only the big letters. Yeah, I have s I have some idea of uh, uh, the Sabbath, but I have only only continuing idea of the Sabbath in, in the African experience. I think. Uh, there are many uh, good presenter, uh, presenters who have prepared good presentations uh, in relation to this topic, the Sabbath in the African uh, the experience. So I don't think my task is to discuss about it, uh, but I want to just share my idea uh, on the Sabbath in principle in general with you. Uh, I, I have prepared some uh, here, uh, but this is not a really a research paper. This is just a sharing of the idea and very uh, principles in our understanding of uh, the Sabbath. I hope this will be a good preparation for uh, your uh, meeting and all the presentations and discussions in this forum. So I put the title here as a brief discussion on the significance of the Sabbath. So we want, uh, I want to review some uh, key texts in relation to Sabbath in the Bible. And also the, some practical uh, considerations as Adventists. Okay. In the Genesis, 
chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 actually in verse 1 uh, there's no uh, mention of the seventh day but only chapter uh, the verse 2 and 3 uh, mentions uh, about the seventh day this is the first bible text anyway uh, which mentions about the seventh day here let me read uh, the bible verses here text on the seventh day god ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done then god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which god had created and made <clears throat> okay this bible text tells us what god did on the seventh day of the creation week and uh, what he did to the very day okay it the verse 2 begins with on the seventh day on the seventh day on the seventh day god ended his work and also he rested on the seventh day from all his work. so he he ended his work of creation and he rested it means the completion of the creation work then it says he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it the reason why he blessed the seventh day in this context is and also why he sanctified the very day the seventh day is because he rested from all his work this description this is just description we believe the genesis was written by moses this is just the, uh, just the description what ha on what happened on the seventh day of uh, the creation week and the description here is focused on what god did on the seventh day and what happened to the seventh day he did he rested he ended his work and he rested on that day and he uh, blessed the day and he sanctified the day but we don't find any idea of the term sabbath here concept of sabbath uh, we find here but the term sabbath is not found in this bible text so we don't know what is the uh, I, i'm not biblical side scholar so i don't know what is the real origin of the term itself the sabbath okay of course and uh, in the language we can find the origin of this term but what's the point when it was originated uh, i don't know when actually in the bible so the origin of the sabbath itself the seventh day sabbath itself is the seventh day of the uh, of the uh, creation week but the origin of the term the sabbath we don't know exactly when it began actually but anyway in the next bible text in exodus 28 to 11 of course we can find uh, the idea of sabbath on discussion of sabbath story of sabbath uh, before exodus 20 because it was mentioned in relation to the manna uh, but here in exodus 28 to 11 it is uh, mentioned very uh, specifically this is a part of the ten commandment as we understand remember the sabbath day to keep it holy six days you shall labor and do all your work 
But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, not is not, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. As I mentioned, in Genesis 2, there's no uh, mention about the Sabbath, only seventh day. But here, now the seventh day itself is called the Sabbath day. Okay. So sometime uh, later, it, it, it began to be called the Sabbath. But at creation, on the very day of uh, uh, the, first, the very first Sabbath, it was not called Sabbath because Moses didn't use the term Sabbath to describe the very first Sabbath, actually. But sometime later, it, was, it began to be called as the Sabbath. So here, the people, the people of Israel, even though they, they were uh, living in, in the land of Egypt for a long time, for several hundred years, uh, but still, there was certain idea of the Sabbath for them. The seventh day is also here mentioned, Sabbath of the Lord. This is uh, one of the most important uh, the, uh, things we need to understand. The Bible tells us, okay, the Bible tells us, the Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord. The Sabbath is God's Sabbath. Not man's Sabbath. Of course, the Bible tells us Sabbath is for man, but it doesn't mean Sabbath is man's Sabbath. It's not our Sabbath. It is God's Sabbath. We need to understand it from uh, this Bible text, actually. Then, the next thing we need to uh, understand from this uh, Bible text is uh, in this commandment God commanded his uh, people his children not to work on the seventh day on the Sabbath day do not do any of your work he says I don't know what was, the, what was their work and what was God's work, but here God clearly says, uh, in it you shall do no work, he says. Okay. And then what do we need to understand here is all the people and all the things, not the people, but the cattle also, under your control shall do no work on the Sabbath day. But I found something here. Why? Why is not mentioned here? It is a little strange for me. Okay. It 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 it, it mentioned you, your son, your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant, even your cattle. And the strangers in uh, 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 within your gate, but it doesn't mention your wife. I'm not sure if the wife was not under the control of the husband in those days, <laughs> because so it seems the husband was not responsible okay, for his wife. But this is my guess anyway. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, it's clear wife is not uh, not mentioned here so it got got the mentions from uh, the son anyway so you may study more on this so from this comparing uh, these two texts Genesis 2 and Exodus 20 about the Sabbath it's clear 
in this context, in this Bible text, in uh, Exodus 20, the basis, the very basis of this commandment is what is described in Genesis 2, verses 23. Okay? Because it says here, in the last part, why you must do this is for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. That is the reason why you must remember and keep the Sabbath holy. This is what God says here. Then again, he mentioned here why he blessed and sanctified the seventh day or the Sabbath is because he rested on that day. So it's uh, also one of the topics we can study or we need to study. Why, what's the relationship between this? Okay. His rest on the Sabbath, on the seventh day, and uh, his work of blessing and sanctifying the very day. Because even in, the, in Genesis and in Exodus 20, it's mentioned the same. Okay. The reason why he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it was because he rested on that day. But uh, I have not uh, deeply studied it yet, but I found it here. So it, it, it could be one of the interesting topics if you want to study on the Sabbath, I think. But this is just my, my uh, uh, presentations, not, not a research paper, not conclusions anyway, and not my argument. There's no argument here anyway, okay? So uh, this is not just my suggestions and my, my findings from uh, the Bible text itself. Okay, then uh, we can see this commandment, okay, the fourth commandment or the seventh commandment is one of the ten commandments, it's clear. So we see, we, we read the ten commandments in Exodus 20. And this is the fourth commandment as we know. And this fourth commandment is based on what happened and the events uh, described in Genesis 2 verses 2 and 3, or even from 1 to 3. So in that sense, I don't know if we can see any commandment in relation to the Sabbath or Sabbath observance in, uh, in, in uh, Genesis 2. It is not commandment, it is just a description what happened on the seventh day now, so the, this Exodus 20, 8 to 11 is God's commandment given to his people, okay, which is related to the Sabbath, okay, and founded, and this commandment is founded on what happened on the seventh day of the uh, creation week. Okay, so that is the relationship, I think. And one is commandment, and the other is the basis of this commandment, I think. Okay. So commandment is one. Actually, the, uh, what the happening or the event is one, and the commandment is another in some sense. Okay. So we cannot say, uh, maybe our church, church members may argue, okay, okay, Sabbath commandment is there in Genesis 2. And when they say so, we don't have, we don't have to argue with them anyway. Okay, but among scholars in this kind of forum, we need to study deeply anyway. So there is no idea of commandment. We don't know if there was any commandment which was related to the Sabbath or not the seventh day or not before the fall. We don't know at creation. We don't know actually. At least Genesis 2 verses 23 is not God's commandment actually. 
God never says anything. It is Moses' description on what happened on that day, right? But we can say it is the very origin of origin of the Sabbath. It's true. Because there was no Sabbath before that day, right? That is the very that was the very first Sabbath. First Sabbath in the history of this world. And the Sabbath is the Sabbath in this world. And we don't know if there is any Sabbath in other uh, places in the universe. Maybe or maybe not. But even though they have certain Sabbath, that Sabbath is different from ours. Because this Sabbath is, as we understand, the memorial of the creation. But not memorial of the creation of the universe, but the memorial of the creation of this earth. So the Sabbath is the Sabbath in this world. In, some, uh, uh, in that sense. So, this is the very first Sabbath for mankind. Man was created on the sixth, in, uh, on the sixth day. So, when man was created, man, when Adam and Eve were created, there was no Sabbath. Right? And after... Uh, when, when, when the, 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 the dark comes and night comes, then that's the very beginning of the Sabbath. Okay. So when they were created, uh, we may say they were created in the late afternoon. So then the Sabbath comes. Yeah, that was the very first Sabbath for them and in the history of this earth anyway. So, and this became certain commandment. But Sabbath is not the commandment, okay? Sabbath is not the commandment. Fourth commandment is not Sabbath commandment. We need to understand the fourth commandment, actually. There are, there are certain commandment orders and something. Yeah. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. That is the key idea, main idea of this commandment. Okay. And how in that culture, in, in the wilderness, and it says, and do not do any work for yourself. Not only you, but all your household. Do not work. That is the commandment. But Sabbath itself is not the commandment. But to keep Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath and to keep the Sabbath is holy. And the commandments includes to do uh, work during the six days. That is also part of the commandment. Okay. So we need to understand uh, these two Bible texts uh, well, and uh, we need to compare these two, and we we need to uh, come uh, to uh, the uh, good conclusions for that. The next Bible text we need to consider in our study of the Sabbath is Exodus 31, 13, and or together with uh, Ezekiel 20, 12, and Ezekiel 20, 20, uh, 20, 20. Exodus 31, 13, we read, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout uh, your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. And Ezekiel 20, 12, here, I also gave them, it is uh, just a reminder of what uh, he did uh, for a uh, people of Israel, a reminder of Exodus 31, 13, actually. I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Ezekiel 20, 20, hallow my Sabbath, and they will be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. This is, what the, the, this, this is the repetition of what the God uh, the told or the spoke to his people in the wilderness. Anyway. So Ezekiel 20, as a whole, 
a chapter is a reminder of what happened in the wilderness actually in these verses it is to uh, that these three verses especially uh, in Exodus 31 13 Sabbath is called again my Sabbath okay. it is it is God's Sabbath okay. thus the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord and uh, what we can find here is the Sabbath the seventh day Sabbath is a sign between God and his people and which remind them that according to this uh, the Bible verse I am the Lord who sanctifies you and that I am the Lord your God so between God and his people, especially between God and the people of Israel, Sabbath was given to them and Sabbath functioned for people of Israel and as the reminder of their status or state as God's people. Okay? So it reminded them that they were God's people. And also it reminds, uh, the sanctification is uh, mentioned here, it reminds them God is the God, God is the one who sanctified them. Uh, there is not, a man, not, not many studies actually uh, on the relationship between the Sabbath and sanctification. There are all the, all the Adventist orders who wrote on the Sabbath mention it but I don't know if there is any deep study on the relationship of the Sabbath and sanctification. It is clearly mentioned in the Bible many times, uh, but uh, we are still uh, we still need to study a uh, deep study actually on the relationship with the Sabbath and our experience of sanctification. Why? Sabbath is so important in relation to our sanctification. I think we can find certain hint. Okay. So in in Genesis two, verses two and three, God sanctified, God sanctified that day. God sanctified the seventh day. The one who sanctified the seventh day will sanctify me too. He is the one who can sanctify something or someone. And on the very day or on the very last day of the creation week, he sanctified the day and the same God will sanctify me. Uh, we can uh, uh, get a certain idea of the relationship between these two but it needs more study anyway and, and again so the Sabbath as the sign of distinction this is important uh, for uh, Adventists actually and then why here says those who would have the seed of God in their foreheads must keep the Sabbath of the fourth commandment this is what distinguishes them from the destroyer who have accepted a man-made situation in the place of true Sabbath. The observance of God's rest day is the mark of distinction between him that served God and him that served him not. And also from our Bible commentary we read, God's remnant will be distinguished by their observance of the commandment of God, including the Sabbath command. At the same time, Apostate religious powers will exert a false Sabbath and demand allegiance to it. Men will be called upon to decide between the Sabbath of the Lord and the substitute Sabbath, or first day of the week. The keeping of the Sabbath will thus again become a distinctive test and constitute a sign of true worshippers. But it doesn't mean this Sabbath or Sabbath observance is always the sign of distinction between God's people and Satan's people in the, in the process of the whole history of the world. Okay? But it was 
it was. It, it, it is it is a comment on uh, on the, the on Ezekiel 20, uh, 2012 actually. So at the time it was a very the sign of distinction, and it will become a sign of distinction again in these last days. Okay. But sometime before even today. We, 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 we understand uh, even among those who keep Sunday, even those who uh, don't come to church, and among them, there are still sincere children of God, actually. But sometime later, sometime later, all God's sincere children will observe the Sabbath as the sign of their loyalty to God. And there will be clear distinction between God's people and Satan's people. And God's people will express their loyalty in keeping the Sabbath. At that very time, the Sabbath will become a sign of distinction again. Now that is what uh, we understand here. And finally, I don't think I have uh, much time anyway. The finally, a practical consideration, Adventist and the Seventh Day. So I mentioned here, uh, questions. Seventh Day Adventist or Adventist on the Seventh Day? Of course, we call ourselves Seventh Day Adventist. Hopefully not many, but some of our members may be just Adventist on the seventh day. Okay. We must be seventh day Adventist, not Adventist on seventh day. The key element when we talk about the Sabbath is not the person, but the Sabbath itself as as a period of time. Here we need to understand. Okay? What we need to keep holy is that the fourth commandment says, remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. So what we need to keep holy on the seventh day is the seventh day itself, right? The commandment says, keep the Sabbath holy. The Sabbath as time, as a period of time, must be kept holy. It doesn't say, you keep yourself holy on the seventh day. But, uh, but some people understand this. We should keep ourselves okay, holy on the seventh day. But that is not what the Bible says, not, not the commandment tells us. Okay? What must be kept holy is the seventh day. Adventists, not only Adventists, God's people or the Christians must always keep themselves holy. Not only on the seventh day, right? We as God's children must keep ourselves always holy. So on the seventh day, we become holier. No, that's not the idea. So we must be holy always the same. Okay? So we are not Adventists on the seventh day, but seventh day Adventists who keep the day holy. That is seventh day Adventists. Seventh day Adventists are not to be holy, not the, not the people to be holy on the seventh day but they are people who keep, who maintain okay, the seventh day holy. Because God made it holy, we should maintain the holiness of the time, seventh day. That is the seventh day Adventist. That's why we are called seventh day Adventist. It's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much.